Now I'm going to ask for a volunteer to take the minutes. <laughs> Anybody raise your hands? How about you, Jenny? You're new. <laughs> yes, I don't know how, but any any time's a good time for a free lesson, you know. Well, if you'd like to take notes on what we're saying, then uh, I'd appreciate it very much. Yeah, sure. Let me go get a good pen. Okay. All right. Thanks, Chris. You just got to get the gist of what we're saying. You don't have to record every word. You've seen our minutes. Just yeah. And then record all the votes that we take. It's easy peasy. All yeah. right. It don't have to be as lengthy as Donna did either. <laughs> yeah. Donna did an what? awesome job. Speaking of recording minutes, um, I know we talked about maybe trying to get um, Jess Murphy to join us on meeting nights to record our minutes. Is that still something we want to explore? I'm not sure why we stopped exploring it. She I wasn't interested. She wasn't interested before. Jess wasn't or Amy wasn't? I know Amy wasn't. Both of them. We thought maybe, we thought Jess would be, but she wasn't. Whether that's still a case or not, I don't know. All right. Uh, she was willing to do the financial stuff because it didn't involve have to involve every meeting. Okay. And she could do it on her own. Should own we schedule. make an attempt at finding somebody at large to do it? Sure. Um, the planning board and the ZBA just hired somebody to do theirs. And they do? I suspect somebody at town offices could either certainly... Explain the process. Anyway. Okay, I'll look into that. That can come out of uh, the administration expense. Okay, um, minutes from our June meeting. I don't have a yeah, I do. Anybody, any comments or questions? Nope. Additions, omissions? No, no. Entertain a motion to accept it. So moved. Second it, please. I second that. Okay. Motion made by Judy, seconded by Chris to accept the minutes as written from Wednesday, June 20th, June 12th, 2024. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed say nay. Unanimous. All right, we are here to discuss the center school. Uh, Judy has sent out some information on different scenarios. Um, you know, maybe it would help um, if I gave a little background on what's happened since. I would appreciate that, yes. Meeting. Okay. Um, you, the CPC very nicely voted for up to 5,000 for the structural engineer, um, Jenny and Rich um, were there when he did a walkthrough of, of a preliminary walkthrough of, of the center school. And he will provide a structural analysis of the roof. And Jenny can answer questions about that. Um, he has submitted an invoice for $500 for the walkthrough. Um, and we've tried to encumber the remainder of the expense so it doesn't come out of next year's administrative expense, but I'm not sure that he's gonna be able to get the work in, in time. He's mm -hmm. gonna be on vacation, but we, we did our best. You had asked about substitute slate and we have found one that, thanks to George Dole, that Mass Historical Commission will accept as being satisfying the secretary's standards for preservation. It's 
called Da Vinci. It's a, well, I guess it's basically a plastic, but it has a 50 year limited warranty. And George said that they used it in the Ames Library in Shelburne and Shelburne Falls, Shelburne. And I know it's it's what was intended at least for the Jones Library in Amherst. And it's one of the costs that they're trying to pare down is to use regular shingles instead of that. If you believe their website, it's about half the cost of, of both part materials and labor to install it. And Rich is in the process of finding contractors with experience in it. So that's going along. Um, and then you have my thoughts on the supplemental budget and and so maybe are there any questions on that before we go to the does that mean it would possibly go from three hundred and thirty thousand dollars to one hundred and sixty thousand dollars for a roof job? Well, if you believe what they say, okay. It's possible, but that doesn't include the structural work. Right. But it's obviously going to be a lot cheaper. It must be a lot lighter, too. Yeah, and it's lighter, much lighter. And that will make the engineering support work easier. Okay. Um, actually, not necessarily, said the engineer, because the concern is the weight of snow mm -hmm. versus slate um and he said that that's a his change in engineering because buildings didn't used to be as well insulated and so yeah. <laughs> the snow melted and now as they're better insulated they have to calculate for snow weight differently that was true with town hall as well. So, so we still don't know, but it's looking, it's looking less scary. Okay. So I submitted a placeholder mm -hmm. application. Um, Sarah, that's, and I guess Chris. That's what we do when um, we want to get something in on the deadline and we don't have the cost estimates. Um, last year, the CPC voted that we really needed to come up with some numbers by 60 days. That would be August 10th. And we're doing our best. Um, I thought I would bounce off you the way that at least I am thinking about how to calculate this. And what the kind of um, stipulations that I think is would be important to make from, from the town's perspective. And I really appreciate any, <laughs> excuse me, any feedback you have. I really hope we'll get enough money to cover this. I mean, we obviously don't know. Um, if it's down somewhere around 250,000 with the cheaper slate, that would be great. Um, again, we don't yet know. Hopefully we'll have a better idea by August 10th. So one, I think it's important that this application stress that this is only for the roof work, not for anything else. That if we get the state grant, we'll put the money towards the roof first before doing anything else. So all of the state grant will go first to the roof. And then I thought, well, we sh it's important that the town not think that they're gonna have to bear the whole burden of this. I really, when I first put it in, I, I was thinking, well, gee, if we're $25,000 short, it would be silly to have to wait a whole year and go through another grant process for something like that. Um, I still, I still think that's probably the most likely scenario. But, 
But where I've been thinking is that if we, if the application says that under no circumstance will the CPA have to fund more than a hundred percent match for the state grant, that would include the twelve percent on the other application. That that would at least put a cap on it. So the so we're playing with a three hundred thousand dollar number that, or I am, I guess, that would include both the the roof and the structural work. I don't know if that's likely. I really hope we'll get something like three or four hundred thousand from the state, but we we just don't know. One thing that we did find out is that. We don't actually have to have the town meeting vote before the grant is awarded. We would have to have it very quickly because they want the RFPs to go out quickly. But it is possible that if we needed to and got the public hearing combined very quickly with, with posting the warrant that people could know what the award was by the time by the time we went for the supplemental grant. Does so the timeline sense? is the grants awarded in early September? It's awarded in September. I don't know what time, what, when in September. And we'll be getting the structural estimate and... Should be getting that. I would think by August. Jenny, you have any idea when? In August, anyway, you might have a better idea of the roof. You're muted, Jen. You're muted, Jen. Yeah, I just lost it on the screen. Um, he didn't specify a time. He just said he was literally we met with him like Friday and he was going on vacation Monday or Tuesday or something. But he did say before he left. So when I come back, can I set up a time with you guys to come help me measure? Um, you know, it'll take a good chunk of the day, basically, and, and expressed that he was excited to work on the project. So we didn't make a definite date with him. Um, you know, I can reach out to him and see if he's back. Um, but he definitely, I agree with Judy that you know, he seemed ready to start work on it quickly. Rich has an appointment with a Tuesday salesperson on the sixteenth. With who? The it's a company called Greenwood Associates that actually stopped and left materials at Town Hall for us. They do institutional roofing uh, and masonry. Okay. And and um, work with all materials and say they're experienced in historic restorations. So, and he's he has names of several others I know. So we'll definitely have more information. I think we could have a pretty complete package of information by the time by the time the award comes. It would be nice if if we could at least approve the regular match first, so we could say that we had committed for what the what the state wanted. And the regular match is the ninety six so thirty eight. Yeah. That's on, that's on your first application. Yeah. Okay. So that we could do sold. that. That then when the if and when the matches are awarded, then, then we could say, gee, we can match your money. We can do this match. And okay. then the next step is whether there's enough money to do the project. We might be able to do some of it, um, get a start on it. I, but at that point, this is insurance. Um, yeah. The insurance part. Now, you, now you're talking about the second application. The second, the second application. You want, to, you want to put a, was it a three hundred thousand dollar figure on that? Well, I, I'd like to, I will do 
I've got till August 10th. We might know more by then. Okay. And then I think that the second Wednesday is the 12th or I don't know. I haven't looked at the calendar. I don't know. Andrew? I'm looking like I got my computer. <laughs> <through the> work. <laughs> Come on. August 14th is the second Wednesday. Okay. Oh, the other update is that the Historical Commission approved the, the 96,000 application. Endorsed it. Okay. All right, so we're still in a kind of a wait and see mode, but we can do the match tonight. At least, when, when, when are we thinking about doing a public hearing? In September? Early yeah. September? Early September. Early September. And hopefully push for a town or, meeting. Or mid, or mid September. And would it matter when the town meeting is? I don't think. No, I don't think so. As long as it, as long as it happened in September, if we do get the grant, they want the RFPs to go out in October or November. Okay. Well, I'm more than willing to entertain a motion on the first application for the ninety-six thousand thirty-eight dollars. For the matches, anybody want to make that motion? I'll motion. Make a motion for that. Approve that. But the, the yeah. way you them out there. I'll second it. I'll so second. we got a motion. We got a motion made by Andrew, seconded by Chris, that we recommend spending ninety six thousand thirty eight dollars. For center school restoration grant matches. Up up to. Up to. Up to. You got that, Chris? Up to $96,038. Anybody have any questions, comments? If not, all in favor, say aye. 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 Those opposed say nay. It's unanimous. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks very much, folks. I mean, you could vote the other one now, but I don't. I'd like to have a number with it. And yeah. Well, we got time. We don't need to do it right now, from yep. what I've been hearing. But does that thought process make sense? I mean, I'm not hearing any, to the extent anything makes sense here. It's a little, never mind. When I get a number, you'll know better. Yeah, it made, yeah. Okay. One other thing I want to talk about is uh, there's been two different. We haven't got the applications yet, but two different um, people inquiring about CPA money used for restoring barns here in the town. One is a salt shed down at the south end of Chestnut Plain Road, and another one's on North Street, possibly. Again, there's no formal applications, but people are inquiring. Um, there's an awful lot of this is my personal opinion. There's an awful lot of historic barns, old barns in this town. And if we're gonna start looking at using CPA money to restore barns, we need to really make sure that this money is for a barn that is different than others, older than others, um, was used historically for something other than the others. I just want to throw it has, to be, has to be for a public good. There has to be some some demonstrable public good involved in mm -hmm. addition to what you're saying. I'm sorry, I shouldn't be interrupted. Oh, no, that's fine. That's good. That's good to add that. I, I, I'm just throwing a word of caution out there. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. If, if you get asked, um, the historical 
commission spent some time developing standards for private property for it to mm -hmm. be eligible for CPA money. And it's yeah. a written policy. And we have sent that to both parties who are interested in in the barn restoration. But it, it goes through essentially just what Alan said. There has to be a unique barn somehow has to demonstrate some public good um, and and all that needs to be documented and so far I think that sort of um, diminished the appetite for seeking the funds at this point but they, they could well show up okay they have to come before the historic commission to plead their case or like as part of a co you know, like saying that this is a historic building or it was emails. Um well, one of them's my one of my neighbors cornering me, you know. <laughs> well, gee, that that yellow barn, I didn't know. And then you point out, well, the yellow barn's in the National Register District, it's owned by the town, it's unique, it was written up in all these articles. And 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 then the voted the voted process and and show them where to look for it. So, if you get a question like that, I'm I'm happy to help. Okay. And the second thing is, has anybody heard about this Galinsky APR that Brian asked us about months ago? Nope. Nope. Okay. All right, I will talk to Peter about that. He asked me if we have heard anything, and I haven't heard anything. I was hoping Doug would be here tonight to see if the Ag Commission had heard of anything yet. Um, that was back in the winter time. Yeah, it was quite a while ago. Is that on River Road? Yeah, and yeah, the land that they purchased down there from Pushesnik, yeah. Data storage. Yeah, right, exactly. Back in <clears throat> back this past winter, uh, Brian Domina asked the CPC if we had if we would look favorably to an APR on that land, and our response was we've always been favorable to APRs. Uh, we can't specifically talk to that one piece of land without getting the application, but uh, that was our response to him, and that is all we've heard and i guess yeah. peter since he's taken over brian's chair has come across some paperwork about this apr and he's trying to find out where it stands so okay well margaret used to be the one that did all the apr business if, if, if you i, I gave, get a hold of, right i, I suggested he check with him and also the ad commission with her yeah. and the with an APR, I probably would have seen it through the concon tubing close to, to Chesnick's, and I think some of the wetlands back there, I yeah. probably would have seen some things. Yeah, yeah. I think Scott was actually asked if he had heard anything, and he said no. Okay, anybody else got anything else? I'll, I'll post the minutes, um, and I did update the membership on the website. Great. CPC which membership. I had just a uh, just got an email from Ray to mine through MDAR. I don't know if you've heard. Um, the Belders Farm is now in permanent uh, farm uh, as a covenant. It cannot be built on or anything. It's permanently preserved, sixty-eight acres. Really? Yeah, it just really? went through. It's a permanent as a far, uh, agricultural piece of property in, in continuity now. Well, that's awesome. Yep. That's really good news. Yeah. Funny they well. Yeah, I guess they got some funding through MDAR to like preserve, you know, it was like a preserve agriculture in mass, and they got a lot of funding, and now they can, it's preserved now for continuity. Oh, great. Yeah. yeah. Maybe that will. Well, that's that's really good. I'm glad they got the funding. They need it. You may know this, Judy. 
do we have to have a we're missing one member does it have to be from the housing sector yeah it does a yeah. housing committee member has to sit I, on this. it has to be a housing representative i don't know that it when the bylaw was passed there wasn't a housing committee right so I don't I doubt that it's I doubt that it's worded to say it has to be a housing committee needs, member. But needs somebody to be representing housing. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's much easier than a housing member. Well, yeah. I was hoping somebody could talk Montserrat into it. But. Okay. That's a good idea. She is on the housing committee. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll reach out I'll, there. I'll email Catherine and ask if she. I don't know. She's on the Concom too, isn't she? Andrew? That's right. Yeah. 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 Well, Catherine maybe. may have a suggestion. Yeah, maybe Catherine could still be. She seems very comfortable not doing it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I think she just assumed. Um, well, I'll reach out to her and see if she has any suggestions, and we can go from there. You might, you might ask Amy Lavalley what the bylaw says, and if it doesn't specify a housing committee member, then I would think Catherine could probably. Okay. Okay. Anybody have anything else? All right. Andrew says August 14th at five o'clock, we meet again. Thank you everybody for joining. Thank you, Chris, for taking the minutes. Yes, sir. I can try to be webmaster next month. I'll make sure my, uh, I can log in on time and I can do that. That'd be awesome. Okay. Thank you. She's good at it. I'm sure she is. Well, lots of practice. <laughs> she planning board. Okay, I'm going to say good night to everybody. Thank, Thank you. Good night. Thank you. Thank you.